Hi there, this is uh, Srikanth Sari. So in this uh, lesson, uh, we are going to discuss about uh, the free function. Okay. So in the last lesson, uh, we have uh, discussed about uh, how to use analog function uh, to allocate uh, memory and create a dynamic array. And now we are going to, uh, so uh, intentionally I have uh, made another tutorial exclusively for uh, free function, which is uh, defined under the header file stdlib.h as mlog.h uh, okay so it's always uh, convenient to understand a free function separately rather than uh, writing rather than learning along with uh, uh, mlog function so it's always a good practice to free the memory whichever you have been uh, using in your program and uh, give it back to the heap okay so first let us uh, declare the essential header files okay so which we are going to use here Okay, so let, let us define uh, the required header files. The first one is going to be, since we are doing it in uh, C programming language, the first one is very obvious, which is going to be the stdiv.h and the second one is conio.h, which we are very uh, familiar, although we are habituated to add these both header files, which are very basic uh, requirement. Okay, so and then we need stdlib.h as we have uh, discussed that uh, the header files uh, very essential to use mlock and free functions are defined uh, under this uh, header file okay so let's take our uh, main function which is very uh, quite a bit common thing here and also let's put the get ch function to make the output window so wait until we give any output here okay so first and foremost i am just declaring the variables which are very essential for us uh, in the program the first let us take a pointer okay so let's say uh, D array since our intention is to build here a dynamic array and just I'm taking a, to uh, know the size in the runtime I'm taking n and i for the purpose of the for loop okay so what is a dynamic array so if you want to uh, re, uh, recap once again so dynamic array is nothing but uh, uh, the problem with static arrays is that uh, if we declare uh, the size once uh, uh, when we are right declaring an array at the compiled time which is also known as a static array it becomes a fixed size okay so uh, in some situations we may not uh, know the exact size of array we are going to use in the runtime the situ according to situation uh, it may shrink or it may uh, grow uh, larger but depending upon the requirement okay so if we say something like this int error of some 50 okay so if you say something like this, if you declare an array like this, uh, is that it's just fixed with uh, 50 uh, elements and uh, starting from 0 uh, index and to 49 is the last index of the element. So here, uh, if what happens if uh, in the runtime, if you need more than 50 elements or uh, if you come up uh, with using only the just 5 the spaces in the array, the rest of the uh, space is going to be uh, wasted. So for this purpose, uh, so we always uh, go for dynamic arrays here okay so let's get rid of this one so first let us uh, put a message here so asking in the runtime to the user so how many uh, so enter the size of array so whatever the size he enters that's that many elements he's going to get here so let's scan that uh, data so percentage d comma n okay so percentage d comma n okay so now uh, let's make use of our uh, mlog function uh, as we have did in the earlier lessons. So d array is equal to. So we need to cast here uh, with the integer. Okay. So mlog. So since we are taking using here integer array, we're trying to build a dynamic integer array. So we need to cast our mlog function with the integer pointer. Okay. So instead mlog n into size of int okay size of int or yeah, whatever you want to you can say so now what happens is so whatever the size you enter to the array suppose if you say uh, you are entering 5 as the size of the array so 5 into whatever the size of the integer given in your compiler here in my case it would be 4 so 20 bytes would be allocated okay so now uh, using the for loop okay so as we can see a message here so print of slash and slash t so just if you want to uh, just if we want to look the contents here uh, whatever the we have uh, just taken so if you, with the help of a for loop here if you say something like this i less than uh, 
so i less than n in i plus plus in i plus plus if you just use the printf statement here printf and uh, printf percentage t slash n comma d array of i okay percentage t slash n d array of i okay so if everything goes well uh, it just asks us for the array or something array is let's ignore that thing okay so let's say five and what happens here is my antivirus is messing the things up here okay just a second okay so if you run this uh, code until now it just asks us for the array let's make uh, let's increase the size of our output window here it would be very comfort in watching okay let's say the size of area is 5 and just nothing happens here whatever the garbage is stored inside the so here what happened is just we have got uh, so whatever the garbage value stored inside uh, that uh, array uh, locations has just we got displayed here okay so now, uh, so let us try to uh, add some elements in the array. So for that purpose, let, let us put a message here also. Let's say that printf slash and slash t. So enter percentage d elements. Enter percentage t elements. Okay. So let's say something like this and dot 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 and let's close. Okay. Close. Come on. Yeah. Okay. So percentage t. So since we have uh, said uh, the array of size of array is n, so that many elements we are going to enter into the uh, array. So for that purpose, we had a message here. So let's have a for loop here. Okay. So for int or I have declared already i i less than n and i plus plus and i plus plus. Let's say now scan. Okay. Let's say the scan function here. Scan percentage t ampersand okay scan percentage d ampersand uh, so d array of i okay so each and every element uh, we are going to scan on that particular index and we have we need to place in that array index here okay so uh, we are scanning that element using the scanner function and putting that inside the array uh, array contents of the array okay so let's put another message here uh, let's say print of slash slash t the contents of array the contents of array are let's make another slash in here okay put another slash in here okay so we are not yet into the free function here we are always still existing here okay so if you run this uh, program until now everything goes fine it just asks us for the size of the array now in this case i'm giving it's five it asks us to enter the five elements let me put some five elements here okay so here it gives whatever the elements you have entered in the array okay so we are done with the output here okay so we have just learned how to uh, create an array and all the stuff okay so now the important point comes here is so now we are done with uh, the, the dynamic array and we have allocated some size to it and contents we have stored it according to our, the size of the array which have given the runtime so now the most important thing is so whatever the memory we have chunk of memory we have used from the heap we have to put it back to the heap once again okay so to do that we need to use this free function okay so free d array so this is the statement so free d array okay so if you say something like this okay so free d array so if you say something like this so what happens here is uh, just freeze the memory and destroys uh, whatever the memory we have allocated and put it back to the uh, heap okay so if you run this program so nothing happens uh, so how you cannot know what happened what is happening underneath the code okay so if you say something like this if you put add five elements and the contents are just shown like this 
and now if you say uh, free uh, it has been done in the background so now if you once again try to print that uh, contents of that dynamic array here down below this statement here okay so after you have freed the memory so now if you try to print it see what happens now okay so file let's put it three elements uh, in order to make it very simple so okay so if you uh, see here let me put a message here let's put a message after freeing the memory let's put a message after freeing the memory okay so if you say something like this uh, if you run the program so here if you at the runtime if you enter uh, four if you want to enter four elements uh, it takes the four elements and it stores that uh, four elements in the array and just gets printed so as soon as you free the uh, memory so those four locations are no longer available and the, the memory is being destroyed and added back to the heap and again you have uh, nothing nothing but uh, a garbage which you have at the very beginning okay so before entering into the uh, before uh, entering into the, at the very beginning you have uh, just uh, nothing you have just nothing uh, more than uh, garbage here okay so that's what we have uh, as soon as we allocate the memory so if you uh, uh, print this statement here let's say so before putting the contents in the array slash and slash just allocate it let's say here so before putting the contents before putting the contents or contents contents okay so if you say something like this let's put a slash in also here also okay so before putting the contents uh, so let's say three so you just have before putting the contents we just have the garbage value stored in that index locations and after that it asks us for three elements since we have opted the size of the array as three and just giving the three elements as input so the contents of the array it's just displays and after freeing the memory again you have uh, the same uh, garbage uh, which have uh, before putting the elements here okay so uh, by the advantage of freeing memory is that so again you can make use of uh, this very statement okay so again you can make use of this statement once again okay you can take that statement once again 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 you can uh, allocate uh, memory so again you can allocate uh, memory or you can uh, if you want you can uh, you need these statements also because since you are uh, uh, making it uh, available online okay or else uh, and run time not online okay so again you can uh, allocate uh, memory and you can uh, uh, initialize the array so let's take uh, this for loop once again here you can initialize the array with uh, zeros or something like this you can put that code once again and let's say here so let's say here of i so this time uh, instead of uh, uh, taking from the keyboard i'm just putting some data here okay so d array so which has been just allocated of i is equal to i plus one i have just initialized the array so you can uh, print the contents of the array okay so what are the contents of the array i'm just copy pasting the code of again since uh, you want to avoid writing the whole thing again and again okay so if you run the program for the first instance it asks us for the size of the array let's say three before putting the contents it's always uh, shows the garbage values and i'm just adding the elements again it's after freeing up again uh, we have the garbage values and again i have just uh, used again i'm making use of that pointer once again to allocate some more elements so this time i wanted uh, six elements so automatically the six elements uh, array has been created dynamically and we have just initialized uh, that uh, array with some uh, using the for loop with the help of the for loop and just the, that contents of the array gets printed here okay so this is all about uh, a free uh, free function okay the free function which is used to uh, deallocate or uh, the memory which has been allocated using the malloc uh, function okay so hope you have uh, liked the tutorial uh, so give a thumbs up and put your valuable feedback in the form of comments so see you in the next lesson goodbye